Welcome back to Sunless Sea. In the last episode, I made a massive amount of progress. I went all the way to the northeast, found tons of places that I've never been to before. Unfortunately, I was never able to really find a great supplier of Zoop or Muter Salt, which was actually the original reason I even came to the north, trying to fulfill that trade request from Fallen London. I didn't find that, but I did find a lot of stuff. Mount Palmerston, the Avid Horizon, Aram, and most especially interesting, I found... Estevel, or Estevel, however you pronounce it, which is where my irrepressible cannoneer wanted me to get to. So, collect a huge bounty of supplies here. Lost one of my Zailers, but that's that's perfectly fine. They're replaceable. Don't worry about it. I guess the Zailers family probably doesn't feel that way, but let's not think about that. So yeah, got tons of supplies, advanced that quest, and now I need to, at least to advance the quest further, I need a... What is it, a, a Judgment's Egg or something like that? Which I can apparently get from Aram. So I can just head back there and grab that. And then after that, I need to go to the Iron Republic. So you can see I have quite a quite a ways to travel. All the way around here, back down to the Iron Republic. And that is precisely what I intend to accomplish today. I really want to see where this quest goes. So first thing to do is go get the Judgment's Egg back at Aram. So, let's go. This is so exciting. I wonder what's going to happen at the end of this quest. I'm hyping it up so much for myself that I'm kind of worried I'm going to be disappointed. It's going to be like, here's five supplies and a couple of fuel. Nah, it's going to be something good. It's definitely going to be something good. Oh, wait a minute. Oh crap, I can't even buy it, can I? It takes... holy shit! It takes ten secrets. Ten secrets for a Judgment's Egg. My god. Okay. I guess I know what I'm saving up for. That, whatever's going to happen at the end of this quest is going to have to be incredibly, incredibly valuable. Ten secrets. That's insane. And, uh, yeah, you can buy secrets directly, but they cost basically a thousand echo, which is way too much. No way. I can only afford one anyway. There's no point. Well... Okay, then. So my original plan was to get the Judgment's Egg and then head back, coming back the way I came, go to Mount Palmerston, which will allow me to restock on fuel, and I believe they had the Zoop, the one that didn't have a very great profit margin. It wasn't a very good profit margin. I think it was like, I think it was going to gain maybe 210 Echo out of it, which probably wouldn't even pay for my fuel to get up here, up north. But I was just going to do that anyway, just to play it safe. Go back to London and then just go straight south. But now I don't have any reason to do that. Because there's no point in heading to the Iron Republic if I don't have the egg. So. Um, I think I'm just going to look for a better source of trade goods up north. See if I can perhaps find the muter salt. Because that trade contract was going to give me more than the Zoop. The Zoop is worth, what was it, 700? I have it written down. Yeah, the Zoop is worth 700 if I complete that, and the Salt is worth a 1,000. Uh, so, given that, I'm going to go down south a little bit, and then just head straight west, and then make my way back to Mount Palmerston and restock on fuel, I suppose. Since it is actually cheaper at Mount Palmerston than it is at Fallen London. Yeah, 
Sounds good. See if I can find some alternative suppliers of trade goods here. A little bit scared about going into the open Z rather than kind of sticking near the coast, but nothing to be done. Must explore. Also, interestingly enough, when I was loading into the game, there's like a little loading screen hint. And it was saying something about like, if you're having trouble making money, try looking for quests in Wither. Up here. Which I've apparently already been to. And I don't remember there being any particularly easy way to make money there, so I'm not sure what it's talking about. Nothing here, huh? Whoa. This must be the Void's approach. Nunico, southwest. That is a lighthouse, right? This light that's sweeping across me? Okay, good. I was worried it was some sort of a massive enemy or something. Looks like Nunico is directly south. Let's turn my lights off since I'm kind of close to this... Close to this ship. It's only got 130 hit points. If I had full health, I'd... Whoa, shit. If I had full health, I might be able to take that. Since I don't, though, I don't want to risk it. Here we go. Ah, I'm guessing this is the rat colony, or... A rat colony, anyway. profile of that grand statue. Taciturn functionaries walk the docks in the uniforms of postmen. An enormous crown statue casts a chilling shadow. The shadows gleam with rats' eyes. Their ceaseless chittering rolls like the tide. A similar port report. What's going on here? There's a bunch of things. Learned in postal secrets no more than seven. Cultivating friendships with postmen no more than zero. Hmm. It sounds like if I know the postman, I might be able to assemble a better port report. So let's do other stuff first and see if I can maybe get a better report. Let's go to the postman's tavern. What's going on? The inky blotter, it's called. The sign doesn't look like much. Warmer inside than it looks. Faces turn in your direction, but no one seems surprised to have a new arrival on the island. Lit by two roaring fires, one at either end of the room. The bartender is in a postman's uniform, like almost all of the patrons. A noseless postal inspector called Blunt Thomas delivers the drinks, clears tables, stacks the firewood. Ask why the local currency consists of rats. Two strings of rats for a pint of ale. Wait, what? I'm very curious why the local currency is rats. That's kind of weird.
Yeah, let's ask him what's up with the currency. Scarcity is not an issue. The hairless postwoman at the end of the bar smiles mirthlessly. Or maybe it's just the lack of eyebrows that does it. Long enough carrying the things around, you get into the habit, she says. Then she tells you that if you stay out long en uh, late enough, you'll see some of the postmen making a procession to the center of the island, stringing up rats around the statue like eulatide decorations, in prayer to an ancient deity of this place. From the coughing and choking elsewhere in the pub, you'd guess this is a story they often tell to newcomers. Hmm, sounds like the story might be bullshit. Okay, what's up with the big statue? The Monumental Postman. Oh, that. It's all of us, isn't it? Sort of the spirit of the island. Most of them don't seem troubled for more of an explanation than that. Though the hairless postwoman tells you it didn't always look like a fallen London postman at all. That it used to have a different face, and a more old-fashioned outfit. Why do I feel like cultivating a friendship with these people is going to lead to something really bad? Alright, let's keep going. Listen in on the postal tale... the... Postal tall tales. Fishermen brag about fish that got away. Postmen brag about hard deliveries. Amazing what you get for a penny stamp. Delicate bottles lowered down chimneys on a rope. Do not fold under any circumstance letters curled through a narrow slot. Rattling, groaning crates brought back to the same address every day for 22 days running. The windows they pried open. The servants they bribed. The delivery surcharges they paid out of their own salaries just to get rid of one more packet. It's hard to tell which they hate more. The senders of mail, or the recipients. Stands to reason, if the message was a welcome one, they tell the other fellow in person, reflects the hairless postwoman. Dare I ask why the hairless postwoman is hairless? Sure. No, she says. Kurt, not pleased you asked. Still had eyebrows when I came to Nuncio. The postman at the next bench diverts you, speaks in a low voice. Lots of people find habits when they can't deliver the post anymore. This one has a plucking habit. Best learn not to notice. You glance up. The hairless postwoman is still glaring at you. Aww. I lost friendship. <laughs> I figured it seemed kind of a rude question, but I was curious. Can I just ask the same question and gain more? Apparently. Can I just keep doing this? Okay, now, it, now it's gone. Ask to borrow a uniform. Hmm. Not just yet. Let's see what else is going on here. Let's check out the beach. Shifty going. The rocks slip and slither underfoot, but you keep your balance. Argue with the man holding a broom. He's determined. He keeps shoving letters into the sea. The sea keeps shoving them back. <laughs> a frustrated postman? It's like, God damn these letters, I'm not delivering them anymore. Hmm. Argue with him. Assist him or rescue a dripping parcel. Let's see what's in one of these letters. Shiny. Drowning pearls. Dozens of them. And an explanation of how they were harvested that turns the hair. The divers lost among the deep coral. The beasts that had to be fought off during harvesting. The growing terror aboard ship. All that has been done was done according to your lordship's will, concludes the letter writer. In anger, in pride, in unquestioning submission, impossible to say. Gained terror, but I gained a 20 drowning pearl. Hmm. Is that actually cargo? Okay, thank god it isn't, because that would have taken up 
Actually, I couldn't have even I couldn't have even fit it at all. It wouldn't have fit. Still chilly from the fingers of drownies. What the heck do you do with these? I know I've seen them required for some sort of event before. Or maybe I could sell them or something, but I can't remember what or where. Should come in handy at some point. Let's go back to the beach. Let's, uh... <laughs> let's help him out. Surprisingly soothing. In the long term, what you're doing won't make the slightest bit of difference. Every sodden bit of paper you fling out to sea will come back in a few hours. But for now, you manage to clear a little patch of shore, a few feet on each side. The stones are bare, as they should be. Your companion turns his head towards the sound of your work and gives you a little nod. Lost five terror. Your nuncio learn, learned in postal secrets quality is now one. Aware of flotsam and jetsam. Huh? I don't even know what that means. Study the odd currents. 32% chance. Hmm. The water that brings flotsam ash floats them ashore does not follow the usual patterns. That's strange. Seems a bit too dangerous to risk with that kind of percentage, though. 32. Nah. Let's go back to the docks. Let's go back to the... back to here. Yeah, so let's ask about why the letters wash ashore here. The pole. It's the pole, they tell you. Dead letters are like so many iron fillings. Drawn to Nuncio. See for yourself, suggests the hairless postwoman. Go down to the shore. Collect up a bunch and see what's washed there. And you'll feel it soon enough. Saves time for the rest of us, says another voice. Apparently, beach scavenging is a civic duty hereabouts, like working in the dead letter office. Nuncio workers and dead letters quality is now one. Invited to serve. I guess they want me to help. Okay. And why did the postman come here? You don't get the impression they're making a holiday of it. All unhappy postmen are alike. Their stories have different beginnings. Boredom. Frustration. A fellow who was overwhelmed by guilt after a misdelivery. But they always end the same way. Undeliverable letters and parcels accumulating over months and years. Attempts to ignore the undeliverable. To shove it into a desk or carry it in the bottom of the bag. An increasing preoccupation with these items. Finally, a decision. To meet the compulsion. To go to Nuncio and be rid at last of the remnants. The postmen do not bring the dead letters to Nuncio. The letters bring the postmen. Ugh. See if I can do anything back down by... The beach? Oh, I can try a shift at the dead letter office. I'm worried if I start doing that, I'm going to be, like, stuck here forever. Like... It'll be a compulsion and I'll never be able to leave. I can collect material for the dead letter office. Sure. Will of its own. You make your way along the shore with a big sack. Many of the envelopes are too damp to read. Their address is permanently lost. But a surprising number are still legible. There are also parcels. Here and there is a, a crate, a message in a wine bottle, a sealed cask that has bobbed up out of a shipwreck. Your sack ought to get heavy, with all these contents, but it pulls upwards and away, straining inland towards the dead letter office like an unmanageable dog. I now have a dead post. I wonder if I can actually deliver some of these letters. Perhaps in my journeys I could finally find who they were supposed to be delivered to. That would be interesting. Some old, water-ridden message from years ago. Let's do it again. Can I just keep doing it? Is there any reason not to? Let's 
Doesn't take any doesn't take up any of my hold. Doesn't appear to be spending anything. Let's try a shift at the dead letter office. Extensive tour. Blunt Thomas takes you around the office. A small collection room where those retrieving letters may state their business. A much larger set of back offices where newly arrived letters and parcels are collected and sorted. A dank, briny smell that never goes away. Presumably because so many of the parcels spend time in the water before they arrived here. In the back room is a machine manned, ratted, by a postal rat. A ratus faber in a pinstriped hat. It shovels sludge-damp letters into the machine's hopper, and they come out dried, cleaned, pressed, and sorted into slots by size and quality of paper. Oh, it's so cute! One has various possible occupations here. None could be described as fast-paced. Talk with the postal rat. Feed your undeliverable letters into the sorting machine. Ask the postal rat for a key to the basement. Hmm. Looks like I need to have six friendship with the postman. Or I can study what's going on in the back room. Let's converse with the rat. On the Islanders. Do you like having sticky hands? Asks the postal rat. Most people... They have sticky hands. They can't wait to clean them, yes? For a postman, an undeliverable parcel is sticky hands. Bothers you till it's fixed. The longer you serve in the post office, the worse it feels. Delivering a letter correctly is good, so not delivering it is bad. The unclean feeling gets too strong and they come here. Converse again? Regulations. Oh, no, no. That wouldn't be permitted at all. There are strict rules about the initial handling and sorting of post. An experimental machine might mangle the letters. It's only the dead material that is unimportant enough to be entrusted to a Rattus Faber. His voice isn't bitter, but he twists a coil so hard that it springs sideways out of the machine and pings off your shoe. Now I can ask him for a key to the basements. But before that, let me sort my letters. 52 categories. After prolonged whirring, the machine begins to distribute. Seven invitations edged in gilt into the correspondence of the aristocracy slot. Two oversized parcels probably containing books into the book tray. One stamped bronze tablet that drops with a clang into a bin marked First City. The Postal Rat watches all this with an air of satisfaction. Let's do it again. And let's do it again. And let's ask for a key to the basements. No trouble at all. He's surprised by the request. Most postmen don't like it down there. No one ever asks for a key. But he'll cut you a new one. Just be careful in there. And come out if you start to feel... wrong. Uh... Do I want to go down there? I feel like my terror is going to go sky... like... bursting through the sky. Open the back rooms. Hmm... I'm scared. Let's, uh, collect some more letters. Can I just keep doing this literally forever? I feel like something is, like, something really bad is gonna happen at some point. Do some more sorting. Doesn't really seem to be doing anything. Oh, 
Okay, screw it. I'm going into the basement. Deep and deeper. You had expected a few shelves of supplies? More files of letters? A few years old? No. It's a pit. So deep that lantern light does not show the bottom. A spiral walkway descends along its wall. And that spiral opens wider as it goes. As if you were looking through the narrow end of a very large shell. Lining this wall are shelves and nooks, unevenly sized. Some are a few inches square and contain single scrolls of papyrus. Others support crates bigger than coffins. They're made of a woody fungus, grown to meet requirements. There are no marks of carpentry or any of the postal rat's handiwork. Three turns down the spiral, and you feel you can't breathe. Time to leave. You can come back later. Maybe. Make a further exploration of the basement. Uh, no thanks, my terror's already 57. Let's tell the postal rat about my basement findings. Troubled but not surprised. They say that's been there since before we came. Before there were Londoners in the Neath. Before there was a dead letter office, there was someone else. And they built the last layer on top of what was there before, and so on. When you press him a little further, he says, I've been down there. Didn't like it much, but I wanted to test my machine. Thought if I could handle some of the very old dead letters, that'd be a good sign. You know, evidence the machine was in working order. Good strong sorting categories, and, and so forth. He pauses. There's letters down there that set your hair on fire if you so much as look at them. See the bald patch on my left leg? That wasn't a machine accident. Oh no. That singed off right as soon as I put my nose into one of them letters. What the hell is wrong with this place? There's something really, really wrong with this place. Strange tides. A mysterious basement. People that lived here before. Mysterious people that lived here before. I shouldn't even say people. Mysterious things that lived here. Tale of Terror. Extraordinary implication. This is a really fascinating place. Descend into the basement with mirrors. Arrange contraptions, divert light, illuminate what has been dark a long time. Damn. That's really, really hard, because my mirrors is actually exceptionally high. 62, but I only have a 37% chance. That's a really tough challenge. No thanks, I'm scared. Descend in the basement with flame. Hmm. Foxfire candles and a flare. I wouldn't mind doing that. Depends how much it costs. Let's see. Ah, they don't have them. Have to get those back at London, I suppose. Back to the tavern, see if there's anything new here. Trade war stories about your shift work? You know how to fit in. Sure. Nothing changed. Common ground. The parcels you've weighed and entered in logbooks. The things that oozed out of them. The postmen are delighted by your incredulity and shock. A civilian, finally understanding the full horror of the post. They have stories even worse than those, let me tell you. Hang on a moment, Postmaster Scritch. We've all heard your rubbery lumps story already. It's nothing to the tomb colony pickles. Pickled what, is what I want to know. And what about that Sooth and Cooper crate and how we had to scrape the bits off the masonry? And uh, do you remember? I'm not quite sure. I, I'm not really sure where, like, my own character's thoughts mixed with other characters' dialogue or what. This one is kind of confusing to read for some reason. Also, I believe I just realized that it's actually Sooth and Cooper crate. I thought it was a Sooth and Copper. It said Cooper the entire time. Just like Admirality. Oh well. Doesn't really matter. Mm, 
more war stories about my shift work. Talk about the caverns below? Perhaps not. You don't get far into your question before the hairless postwoman stands up and goes over to the fire, holding herself tightly. She's whispering nothing coherent. Fire. Clean. Smooth. Down to the bone. No excuse. Smooth. Smooth. Little black hairs. Still your fool tongue, says Blunt Thomas. Yeah, I didn't think that would end well, but once again, I was curious. And I just gained my trust back. No problem. Can I have a uniform, please? Look, but not touch. They're polite, even apologetic, about your request. You're welcome here, and welcome to take shifts at the Dead Letter office. But you cannot wear the uniform unless you were a postal employee back in fallen London. Regulations. Blunt Thomas lets you have a look at his uniform jacket, at least. Neat stitching. Gilded buttons. A thin but dignified circle of braid at the collar. Inside, a patch that goes over the heart, stitched with six red letters. You can't read it, but it makes your eyes itch, and your scalp feel like burning. I think it's time to leave. Oh wait, I still haven't assembled a port report. Let's see, back to that. Oh wait, this is new. Take soundings. Perhaps there's some evidence of the great hollowness underneath these shores. Sure. Depth below. Striking the ground causes the stones to shift and rattle. It is hard at first to hear anything more than that. But if you try long enough, and strike hard enough, the whole beach shivers like the surface of a drum. The flotsam letters quiver and align themselves in concentric circles around the point of impact. The next wave brings ashore three or four times the usual freight. What the hell? That's really strange. Okay, is there anything else I want to do here? I don't want to go into the basement. I think I want to go back to London and get the flares and the Foxfire candles. Because I don't want to risk my people going insane. Because I think if I do this challenge here, and if I fail it, which I probably will, given that my chance of success is 37%, if I fail it, I think my terror is probably going to go way up. And I might even lose some Zailers. <laughs> they might, like, fall into the bottomless abyss or something. Yeah, is there anything else to do? I don't think so. Just get a port report. Uniform behavior. Cataloging all of the peculiarities of the place takes many pages. The tailor who imports gilt buttons and braid just to be able to keep everyone's uniform in condition. The fashion of wearing a post bag with nothing inside. Wearing it open, wearing it upside down, torn apart, or as a hat. Wearing it anyway that will show it doesn't have letters in it. Then there are the sitting rooms prepared in cancelled stamps, the bergamot pomegranate curd on toast, the commerce in rat corpses, the hatred of cats, <laughs> the absolute custom against ever issuing a paper invitation for any event, no matter how formal, is the familiarity, the not-quite-Londonness of the place that makes it all so... odd. The hatred of cats. <laughs> that does not surprise me. If your currency is rats, then cats are basically just, like, money monsters. Well, I do believe it is time to go. However, I've spent such a long freaking time on this island that I think I should end this episode here. Because I don't want the same thing to happen for this episode as happened with the last one. Where it's like, oh my god, there's one more cool thing I can do. One more cool thing. Just one more. Just one more island. Just one more island. And then, oh god, it's an hour and a half. Nope. Just gonna cut it short before that happens. Yeah, I barely went anywhere. I spent the entire episode going up to Aram and then down to Nuncio and that's it. But damn, this island is incredibly dense with stuff to do. It's amazing. What a strange place. 
And unfortunately, they don't have any muter salt or zoop. So next episode, I'm just going to head northwest up to Mount Palmerston to redo my fuel, and hopefully there's some islands inside of here. And on if on the way to Mount Palmerston I don't find any zoop or muter salt, then I'm just going to buy the zoop that I think was at Mount Palmerston. Pretty sure it was there. Because I want to come back with at least something, even if my profit margin is not exactly great. So yeah, gonna set Zale for Mount Palmerston in the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.